here we're being given a couple of polynomial functions. Uh, we see their equations here and we're being asked to match them to their graphs. And let's just assume that we don't have a graphing calculator available so we can't just punch this in and pick the one that matches. We can figure out the answers to this. We can be smart about how we uh, look at the end behavior of a polynomial function and also about the zeros where it crosses uh, or touches the x-axis. Let's try this first one. f of x is negative 4x cubed plus 8x squared. So this is a cubic function, so its degree is odd, and the leading coefficient is negative. So what we know about end behavior says that it's going to um, fall from the left and do jiggle around a little bit and then um, uh, fall again on the right. So it looks like it's going to be either maybe B or maybe C or maybe E. So those are all possibilities. So this kind of end behavior is true for any negative cubic function. So what's different about B, C, and E? Hmm. Well, let's take a look at the zeros of this function. We can find the zeros by factoring and setting the factors equal to zero. So let's see what we could do here. Actually, it looks like I can factor a 4x squared out of each one. And that would leave me with negative x plus 2. So 4x squared equals 0. I divide by 4, I get x squared equals 0. So what we're actually going to get is 0, but with a multiplicity of 2, because we have this squared. So I'm just going to note that as 0 times 2. The multiplicity of a of a root here actually affects um, how the graph looks. And I'll show you how that works in a minute. And then we have a uh, negative x plus 2. Let's see. So negative x plus 2 equals 0. Subtract 2 from both sides and divide by a negative 1, we would get x equals 2. So our graph should cross at x equals 2 and do something at 0. So there it touches at 0. Here it crosses at 3 and some negative number. So I don't think it's going to be graph C. We can rule that one out. And here at E, it crosses at 2 and it crosses at 0. So this is where the multiplicity of this factor comes in. When you have this um, even multiplicity, what it means is the, the graph will touch that point on the x-axis, but not cross it. So for this one, our answer is going to be graph B, because here it touches at x equals 0, uh, but it doesn't cross it. All right, let's look at our second one. So we've got h of x equals 3 times x minus 3 times x squared minus 1. So uh, let's find the degree and the sign of, of the leading coefficient. So if we were going to multiply these out, our first term, we'd get 3 times x times x squared. So that would be a positive 3x cubed. So this is going to be a cubic function, an odd function, with a positive co leading coefficient. So our end behavior is going to look like this. It's going to rise. Um, as we go to the right, it's going to fall going to the left. So that would either be A or D or F. Okay, so we can rule the rest of these out. Now let's let's do some factoring here and look at our zeros. I'm just going to do this uh, a little bit in my head. At this point, you may be doing the same. X minus 3, when we set that equal to 0, we're going to get X equals 3. And X squared minus 1, we're going to get a positive or negative 1. So x equals a positive 1 and x equals a negative 1. If that went by too quickly, x squared minus 1 equals 0. We add 1 to both sides, take the square root. And when we take the square root, we need to do a positive and a negative. That's how I got a positive 1 and a negative 1. So it's going to cross the x-axis in three places. Um, this one crosses at 0 and 2. So that does not look right. This one crosses at 1 and 3. That's got 2 out of 3, but that doesn't look right. And this one crosses at negative 1, 1, and 3. That's the 1. So the solution for that one is graph F. So that is a little bit of work with matching graphs uh, with their functions.